everybody in the organization top down. We want them to think and act scientifically because when they do, we can do anything here. If we limit who we think can do that, then what kind of opportunities, what kind of openings, what kind of chances are we going to give them to engage in this process and then their ideas and things? Today, I'm excited to welcome Sam Morgan and Andres Alamillo to the show. Now, um, as timing works out, I do believe today, if it's not today, it's pretty close today that it's Sam's birthday. So... Happy birthday, Sam, <laughs> if you're listening. Uh, so anyhow, we had a great conversation. Uh, so Sam and Andres are both passionate, continuous improvement thinkers. Um, and they're also really, really passionate about Toyota Kata and the whole scientific uh, thinking community. And so today we, uh, we had a really interesting conversation. We talked about how to spread <laughs> this, uh, this movement of continuous improvement, of Toyota Kata, of scientific thinking, whatever you want to call it, how we spread it really across the world um, to everybody and every company, no matter who you are, what you do, um, you know, this stuff applies. You know, it's one of the age old issues that that I've seen throughout my whole continuous improvement career and that, you know, we're different, you know, or this doesn't apply to us. And and so uh, this conversation definitely really debunks that. And then Sam and Andres add all kinds of other really, really powerful uh, thoughts for us to, to consider. So really appreciate those guys for coming on. Um, show notes can be found over at GembaPodcast.com. Look for episode 477. Also, scroll down on your app as you're listening to this, whether it's Apple Podcasts or Spotify, wherever you're at. And uh, the links to connect with Sam and Andres are going to be on there. So hit those guys up on their, on their LinkedIn and social media. And um, also, while you're down there, look for the uh, the reviews for Gimba Academy. If you like the show, please do uh, leave us a, a review. We really do appreciate that. It helps the uh, the old algorithms, as they as they say, to uh, to reach more people. And that's really what we're all about: spreading this good news that is continues improvement. Okay, enough for me. Let's get to the show. Sam and Andres, welcome to the show. How are you guys? Doing well. Thank you, Ron. Appreciate you having us on. Yeah. Good to be here. Good to be here. Yep. Sam, you were just on not not that long ago. When were you on? Let me see. Oh, gosh, man. Probably like three, four months ago. It feels like yesterday, Ron. Yeah, I know, right? Time flies. It. What's funny is, you know, I don't know, the guests probably... Uh, I figure this out by now, but I rec- when we record these, they probably don't come out for like three or four weeks or whatever, you know, because we're always ahead a little bit. So somebody said, oh, I love your podcast today. I'm like, yeah, which one was that? <laughs> you know, because <laughs> it was like a month ago when I did it. So, uh, but yeah, I appreciate you guys for taking time to come back on. So, um, you know, right out of the gate, um, we like to start with a quote. So um, I-, I think both of you might have one. So who, who wants to go first? Sam, go for it. Okay. All right. Well, um, I'm really excited to be here with uh, with my friend Andres and talking about some of these things that are really near and dear to our heart. Um, and one of those things for me is all about continuing and taking action forward. And I just finished this book called The Practice by Seth Godin. And it's really it may not sound like a kata book, but it very much to me is. And he says in this book, um, when we're talking about being brave and creating and doing new things, he says, You've already spoken up at least once, contributed something that mattered. You have said something funny to a friend or perhaps even sold out Carnegie Hall. And now we need you to do it again, but more so. The real question is, do I care enough to do it again? Mm. What's that mean to you, Sam? Just being brave. Being brave. Because too often we think we got to do some big, grandiose thing. But really, it's just about showing up and... um, doing what matters to us, Mm. being brave. That's what it means to me. Well, yeah, even just thinking in kata terms, you know, taking that next step, right? (laughs) Embracing that threshold of knowledge, right? And shining the light, right? And going forward. Yeah, it can be scary. Good stuff, Andres. And it should be scary, right? A little bit scary. Right? Yeah, to expand our knowledge. Um, well, thank you for asking for the quote, Ron. I appreciate that the kind of reflection. Um, for me, something that really resonated and has been resonating um, throughout maybe months and, and, and years is this quote by James Keller. Um, 
And he says, a, a candle loses nothing by lighting another candle. And it really kind of, for me, it really illustrates the ability for us as human beings to be there for someone, um, even if we're not saying anything, even if we are like Sam says, showing up and practicing the, the art of, of active listening, right? Sometimes that could even spark ideas, the quietness. So um, I love that. Yeah. And it really resonates as a parent. It really resonates as a leader in the organization as well. Gosh, that's such a good quote. I, uh, I think it was on a podcast or <laughs> I was having some conversation recently and, and we were talking about the importance of kind of supporting people who are going through some hard times. You know, I've shared with you guys, I've been going through some challenges with medical situation with my parents and all the rest of it. And, and I remember hearing recently, somebody said that, you know, sometimes the best thing that you can do when someone's going through hard time, it's not try to fix it. I'm not try to even console them. It's just to say, Hey man, I'm with you. You know, I'm, I'm here beside you. And that's it. Just shut up. You don't need to say anything else. You know, just in somebody knowing that somebody else is right beside them. I mean, that could mean all the world or all the difference. Right. For sure. So, yeah, good stuff. I mean, I love that candle loses nothing. <laughs> Lighting another. Fantastic. I never heard that one. Good stuff. All right. Hey, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sam, you were just on, but we'll let you go first and just give a, a, a refresher for everybody on who, who is Sam Morgan. Yeah, well, um, man, that's such like a big question. I love how you was like, who are you? Uh, let's just tell you who that <laughs> is. is like truth, 30 seconds. Sam, no, that should know? be no problem. 30 <laughs> yeah. seconds. Yeah. Well, um, Illuminate Coaching Consulting is my business, but who I am, man, um, I'm uh, a husband, a father, um, a friend, um, a coach, um, someone who just loves to like what you're talking about there, um, Andres, and just being present, giving yourself, being brave, and helping other people, right? One of the things that's really sat for me recently is... Like you just said, Ron, um, seeing people like I think as coaches, practitioners, lean, um, whatever we want to call ourselves in terms of titles, um, we're into problem solving, right? But too often that leads us to see people as being broken mm. when really, if we think about it, it's people aren't broken, right? We're all on a journey. And so for me, framing my coaching as standing alongside somebody and walking along with them. And so that's how I reframe and am reframing who I am as someone who's yeah. just along the journey and helping people, you know, navigate through and um, be their best self as, um, as one um, person that I heard, his name is Timothy Keller. He did a series mm -hmm. on um, marriage a few years ago and, um, that when my wife and I were very, very young um, in our marriage early on, um, we heard his sermon on um, how the best kinds of marriages, right, are ones where they see the person's glory self. So they see their best self and their goal is basically to pull that out. So that would be mm. who I am, somebody who's trying to pull the glory self out. Oh, I love others. that. Fantastic. Beat that, Andres. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just preface it with I won't. But uh, <laughs> Oh, God. No. Hey. <laughs> My name is Andres Alamillo, and I am a continuous improvement leader here at um, Smith Gardens. So, so Smith Gardens grows flowers, uh, and we wholesale to Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmarts. And um, that's our bread and butter, flowers, right? Nice. But underneath it is, um, or I would say above it, is really about leadership and um, coaching and developing uh, leaders um, so that we can be around for another 120 years, really. This is a fourth generation organization. And um, my role is to work with executive uh, leadership, senior leaders, and um, teach the principles of, of lean and continuous improvement, really. And outside of that, I'm a husband a, and a father to a 16 year old and a nine year old. Um, nice. So, yes, it's a it's a full time job. It's a full time yeah. job. And I love it. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. Um, and, and, and so just to, to frame the context a little bit of this conversation, 
uh, I know Sam is a Kata geek, and Andres, am I right to uh, assume that you're also part of the whole Kata community and, and a big believer in this whole movement of ours? That is right, Ron. Yes, we've been practicing uh, Kata. We call it Pattern for Daily Improvement here at Smith Gardens, and we've been practicing since 2000, I don't know, uh, 16, 2017. Um, and we really love the pattern, how easy it is to teach and to coach. Um, obviously, there's lots of steps that are that are needing to to be um, you know learned, but but people mm -hmm. learn. People learn no matter education level. They are able to understand it if we do a good job as teachers. So, yes, we 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 love the pattern. And you know this, we started practicing early on in 2014. We did a lot of kaizen events. Those were good. They got us out of some of the hard things that we needed to fix in terms of shipping and, and, and uh, distribution. Um, but we had to graduate. We had to move on to more of a step-by-step -step, uh, continuous improvement type methodology. And, and Kata is, is, the, is, is our bread and butter for improvement, PDCA. Nice, nice. So, but as we were brainstorming for the uh, for the episode, I guess uh, I don't know who had the idea. One of you. Um, we we're gonna sort of frame the questions in more of a an akata framework. So, you know, we, we teach people when we're teaching kata that uh, out of the gate, one C is is the challenge, <laughs> right? When we're we're typically approaching something. So, uh, so maybe we'll just open up with the whole idea, or really what we what we're going to talk about today is building community with um, perhaps with a kata with scientific thinking framework. So why should we care about building a diverse community? Yeah. So for, for me, Ron, and, and I think uh, Sam shares the same sentiment is that um, we know that, that humans are complex beings, right? Uh, we all bring a unique set of skills and, and experiences and so um, it's easy to kind of marginalize people and uh, based on our biases, but our, our, our role as leaders, I believe that our role as leaders in organizations or communities is really to recognize that each individual brings something special, right? That each individual can bring something unique and that they matter, right? So, and, and that's really about bringing new perspectives into, into the communities. And so um, really uh, for us, it's teaching and coaching, um, not just because you are at a certain role or a certain level in the organization, but to teach all because we know that we're better together. That's really kind of my, my why it's important to build that diverse community. Yeah, you know, Andres, I think from what you shared there and you started to share a little bit about that idea of every person feeling valued and seen and heard right at every level right in an organization or in our communities right and how we are so much better when that happens and it starts to when we when we have to we have to start with that framework right i i recall a story from katakan that i think got us both a little you know frustrated and a little upset if we're if we're being quite honest right where and we won't, of course, call out any person in particular, but there was there was a question that was asked uh, of a presenter there about um, they had been sharing a story of how they practice kata in a certain organization and how uh, someone in the audience had asked about, you know, um, well, how do you teach kata to um, I think it was like custodial staff, basically, or can you? And um the the one of the the presenters had shared something to the effect of to answer that question of like well certain people won't get it Ooh. and that just didn't that Andreas and I turned to each other in that moment and we're like I could feel myself getting like physically getting warm because <laughs> if we truly believe as lean practitioners in respect for all people mm -hmm. um that does not align with that value at all now I don't know the person's intention um, or, or where they were specifically where they're coming from, but I know how it hit us, hit me personally. And that was like, no, 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 no. Right. And especially when we think of custodial staff, I'll just call it out. Right. Cause some people are probably thinking it particularly Latino, you know, like that's like typically who you might see in your mind in that role. And so for me, it was like, damn, we can't, 
that doesn't that doesn't feel so what does feel right is like every person can practice mm -hmm. this right andres like what you talked about like at smith gardens that everybody in the organization top down right is we want them to think and act scientifically because when they do we can do anything here if we mm -hmm. limit who we think can do that then what kind of opportunities what kind of openings what kind of chances are we going to give them to engage in this process and then their ideas and things so yeah andres for me it's uh, it's all there and i know you uh, had had some thoughts on that whole idea of feeling seen heard and valued as well yeah yeah so so like i mentioned uh at the beginning of the of the conversation i'm a parent of of a nine and 16 year old and i remember something very distinct that that happened in a couple of weeks ago it, we were getting ready like every parent does uh you know let's get breakfast let's go brush our teeth let's go comb our hair right and and this process of getting ready and and then we drove to the school i drove my daughter to the school that that morning and we were sitting in the parking lot and i remember having this realization of natalie my daughter sitting next to me and i finally looked at her and said this is the first time i'm actually seeing you right and this is the first time i'm actually seeing you this whole morning i saw you i saw you in bits and frames and pieces but this right now, this moment of sitting in this parking lot, I see you for who you are, for your for your imperfections or your perfections. Right. And I told her, I voiced that out. Natalie, I see you for the for the first time this morning. I apologize for not being so present. Right. And that made me think as a as a leader into the organization, how much of our time is spent not seeing people. Right. And so and, and people want to be seen, Ron. People want to be seen for for who they are, for what they're worth. The second piece is is hearing people. Right. So I remember another another distinct point in in, um, in in my leadership here. I imagine a thirty acre farm where we've got flowers everywhere, and then all these flowers have to end up on pallets, which are racks actually that go out to the different stores. And this centralized place where we hold our pallets, we call the staging area. I remember going downstairs to warm up my lunch and running into one of the team members that is in charge of, of putting those plants on those pallets and asking, hey, how are you doing? And as I was passing by, he said, I'm all right. And in my, in my stomach, I felt this, hmm, why is he just all right? Why isn't he great, right? And so I went and, and spoke with that gentleman afterwards and said, hey, um, tell me more. What's going on? Are you okay? Is everything okay? And he's like, yeah, I'm fine. You know, we are hired here to to ship plants, and um, I'm feeling that you know we're not seen, we're not heard. Sometimes after COVID, we took away the coffee stations, and we're not able to have coffee now in our break rooms. And I took that conversation even further up with uh, with the manager for the organ for the site, and shared that with 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 her. And the next day. The coffee maker was there, coffee was brewed, and it's all about like hearing that person, right? Now that person's feeling heard. And then the last piece is feeling valued, right? Seen, heard, and valued. And the, and the piece about value is about recognition. It's about acknowledging people for what they bring and appreciating them. So every, every week as we meet as a, a CI safety coach team and we share recognition and we make it very intentional to start a round table with recognition who are you giving kudos this week so so that we can start building those behaviors and start building that 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 routine maybe not routine in a bad sense but a routine and like i appreciate people so that then then carries on right so mm. and i think that's really kind of the power of building a diverse community whether you're using kata or kaizen um, but it's really about seeing people, valuing people, and, and making them making their voice be heard, right? So yeah, oh, that's a powerful story. All right, so that's that's one C. That's our challenge. So this whole concept of building a diverse community, valuing everyone around us. So second step, two C, is current condition. So where do you guys see? Let's maybe we'll just keep the framework within our, our little niche here, our little CI Kata lean community, you know, aside from the world at large, because <laughs> it mm -hmm. might be a different answer, but how do you guys see from a, 
current condition perspective that we're doing as it relates to that challenge? Yeah, I think that um, there's opportunity, right? Like that's that was part of the reason why we kind of went down this path is um, um, last year we talked about this at the last Katakan, you know, like the power of having perspective and then um, had some folks engage after that. And Andres is one of them. That's how we got connected was um, he came to a, a webinar um, with uh, with the folks at Lean Frontiers um, and he um, <laughs> he was like, oh, I want to hear more about this. And he actually, I, I think I put a challenge out like, hey, um, you know, first person to like reach out to me, I'll send him a book, uh, a kid's book that I had um, based my presentation on. So I sent that and that's how we connected as I sent him a book. And then we started, he, he came to one of the, the meetings where we were following up on that conversation about how are we going to add more perspectives, right? So to this CI community. Um, because when we were at Akatacon the year before or last year, you know, we looked at like 90 some odd participants and there were five people of color, right? So um, that tells me a story right there. Um, that's that's a current condition if you will have it. Um, and in other, as we started doing more work in the different other Kata communities, whether it was the Kata Girl Geeks um, well, if people aren't familiar with them, that's an all, um, all women's group that does groups, learning groups to support, uh, people who are wanting to learn the kata, practice it and get some real life coaching and learning experience. And it's amazing led by a couple really, uh, good friends and uh, former coaches, um, and Gemma get the Jones. academy guests in the past. So. Oh, well, yes. Shall we say that <laughs> as well? Um, just all around yeah. cool people. Right. So, yeah. um, and then the, the Kata School Cascadia, right? Like we did surveys in these spaces. Um, Mary Jones also helped us. So there was a number of folks just getting some understanding of, you know, what's the, what, what kind of demographics do we have out there in terms of race, folks that identify in the LGBTQ community, neurodiverse, age, location. We wanted to get as best as we could some understanding. And um, that was that was really helpful for us to just even get a baseline for understanding of um, what what's going on out in our Kata communities. Um, so yeah, that's like current condition. We can, we can mm-hmm. go to, uh, we could go to like, what's the solution, but we, we know that that's not. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. Right. We want well, yeah. to start with yeah. just what's the current condition. Yeah. And no, I'll even chime in just from my perspective too. I and mean, we work with a lot of people around the world and a lot of different companies. And, and for me, like the biggest opportunity when you're thinking about building and, and expanding this movement of ours is I go back to your, to your early example of, of that person, whoever it was said, oh no, not everybody's going to get it. Like race and all the rest of it aside, like just that statement was just nonsense because like anyone, I don't care what you look like or what you do, what your job title is, anyone can and should be exposed and benefit from from this. So like for me, the, the biggest gap between your challenge and 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 what we're talking about, trying to understand where the, we where we really are, it's still the whole idea of we're different, you know, like the company, like or I, I'm in sales, you know, like what are you talking about, Kata? You know, like yeah. well, I don't, you know, you know, like we're not Toyota, and I'm like, yeah, because making a car every sixty seconds that's easy, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and so there's still this. <laughs> age old and it's not just kata it's just continuous improvement in general people and thinking that they're different their company's different their job's different and this stuff doesn't apply to them and you know it's one of my life's missions and our company's mission is to break down those boundaries and say no 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 no, no. this does apply to you i don't even need to know what you do because <laughs> I know it does apply to you because you are a human being and there's problems in your life or at your work Therefore, this applies to you, <laughs> right? Now, if you're an AI bot, okay, maybe it doesn't apply. It, well, probably does, though, because <laughs> they'll learn, right? <laughs> they'll be even smarter. But I don't know. To me, that's where the biggest gap is. If we still have this age-old mindset of we're different. This doesn't apply here. So I don't know. That, that's my two cents. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. 
I mean, we, uh, gosh, there's so, so many things like, how are we still in the same space of thinking in that way? Right. I don't, I don't understand why. Um, but I, I like if, as practitioners, right. Like for me, it's, it's, I feel like it's a little bit different, right. As like practitioners, like we're kind of carrying the torch, right. The um, candle. Right. Ooh. Oh, oh! I see nice. what you did there. I see. Yeah, what you did there. CYO worked that in. You know? <laughs> that was good. That was beautiful. No, but like, um, we need to be the one setting the carrying the torch, the candle, right? And like you yeah. said, like Andres, like we're like lighting each other, right? And it doesn't take anything for us to like say anyone else can do it. I think that there mm-hmm. can be a fear there that like I've got this like special knowledge up here with mm. all this like these cool lean things. And, and if somehow, if someone else can do it, then that makes me not special. Like, Hey, let's be honest, right? Like we want to have this special knowledge because somehow we feel like if we don't, then we're not special. Let's just Mm. be straight up. Right. Like we think that if we've got this black belt, if we've got some certification, if we've got this, no offense, Ron, like love, love the stuff that Gemba does. But like, if (laughs) I don't have like some certain class or, or whatever, then somehow I don't have like, I'm not valuable. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's just not what this whole work is about. If it is take Mm -hmm. me off the list, I don't want to be a part of it because that is not what, what I signed up to do. I signed up to bring out the best in people, not to be like, Mm -hmm. set me up here and you're down here. No, that's not what this is about. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, let's keep going guys. So So we've talked a little bit about the challenge. We've talked a little bit about where we all think we are current condition. Obviously, you could spend eight hours talking about the current condition, but we'll we'll, we'll move on for the sake of of the podcast here. And uh, TC, right? So our our next step is our target condition. So what do you think about now? It's difficult with typically in a target condition, you know, for the caught up purists out there you know there's a short time frame that we're aiming for here so we don't get get in trouble by the kata police here but uh well what do you guys think as far as you know this 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 topic that we're talking about what's a what's a good target condition like what could we achieve and by when yeah so we we um actually for 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 our kind of challenge of, of building community and we started with with partnering up with our uh, local improvement consortium, and, and and the reason being is that they have the consortium has a ability to bring in people right through through different means right through invites and uh, different companies can come together, and so we we hosted what we call a Kata Practitioner Day, and about two weeks ago we hosted. A kata practitioner day here at Smith Gardens, and we invited people from different organizations. And the whole part of that, the whole goal was to start building that community. In 2019, 2020, we kind of let go of that, right? We kind of mm-hmm. let go of that community feeling and bringing people together so we can all learn from each other and kind of hear the cool things that are happening. And and the second benefit of that was to see and learn even more of like how diverse is our community, right? How is how are how, how many people of color are showing up? How many male to female ratio? What does that look like? Um, and and so we we ran that experiment, and we still saw that there's some opportunities to get more females, get get more people of color involved, and really the target condition is to continue building that community with the help of different consortium the, the, the consortium. And just carrying on that conversation with people that we left off from Katacon, um, to understand how how are you guys building community? What can we learn from each other? I think that that's mm-hmm. that's how we're carrying the, the Tari condition to the next step. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Sam? Yeah, and another. So I I really have appreciated how Andres is really engaged in that community, right? And getting people together in person, I think that that's powerful too. There's another level there, obviously, in our post-COVID world of uh, us getting together. There's a different level of connection in terms of building community uh, that happens at that level. And also, too, you know, in our conversation at Katacon, we had our, our step that we left everybody with, as Andres and I shared, 
was to write down on a um, post-it note, like this idea of how we're going to move forward in building this community happens one conversation at a time, right? It, we think that like, oh, we got to do this fancy DEI like um, program and check off all the boxes and our C-suite goes through it and like all these things. But no, actually the way you build a diverse community is by stepping out of your comfort zone, being brave and having one conversation with somebody intentionally and doing that over time bit by bit, bravery, intentionality, and time. Mm -hmm. So we challenge everybody to take a post-it note, write down the name of one person that when they go back home, whether it's at the organization in their community, someone that's completely different than them, to, to write down the name of that person and their intention with that, whether it's like, I want to ask them about their kid's soccer game or whatever it is, to start from that one piece, to break it down to the smallest bit, which is one conversation. And put that up on a board. Um, and then alongside that, we put these postcards. Um, this is an idea we got from Tracy Defoe. She said, have them write a postcard to themselves. Future them in a couple of weeks to say, hey, kudos to you for being brave and having that conversation with that person. Um, you're taking one step towards building community, right? And so we had 34 people fill out those post-it notes. And I think 25 plus fill out the postcards, right? And that just got us so excited that we're like, we want to carry this on further. So now what we're doing is we're um, going to be hosting or, or having a webinar to open up that conversation mo even more, right? To like say, hey, how did that go? How did that conversation go? Did it happen? Did it not? It's not about like, oh, you failed or you passed because you did or you didn't. But how did that go? What were the... What like did you learn from that process, right? If we're putting in kata terms, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, what actually happened? How? What did you learn? Um, and just come together and share stories, because ideally, our, our kind of a secret mission is to to really get those handful of people that want to continue on this journey um, and really engage with bravery and take the intentionality and take time to do it to build community. We want to build that out. So uh -huh. our hope, I would say, is out of that to get a core group of people who are really passionate about this and want to maybe meet on a regular basis intentionally over time to have these kind of challenging and hard conversations about some of these issues around race, the LGBTQ, neurodiversity, ageism, whatever these and like how we can continue to have those conversations. What are the challenges? What are the things that are going well? And like we talked about earlier, walking alongside each other during that whole process. Mm -hmm. So to wrap up sort of the routine, you know, we, 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 we identify obstacles and we experiment against obstacles. And we often talk about well, like, what's one thing that you're going to do? You know, I think you touched on it a little bit right there, but do you have maybe a little bit more on like maybe just, or maybe you could even turn it around like just some practical steps that folks can take um, out there listening right now. And, you know, not just what you guys are doing, but like, what, what do you think about that to sort of finish off the, the dance routine, so to speak? Yeah, I think for 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 me, it's about, um, like Sam said, just being being intentional with with including people, with including people that are different than you so that you can gain that perspective. Right. And, and it, again, it, it's not a, a matter of I've got to go talk to this person of color uh, to check off a box, but it's because you really understand the, the why. Right. And, and it's because when when we seek people out for who they are and because they they matter. Right. And and it's not a transactional, but rather transformational step. Right. Then then it's definitely a. Um, doable and, and letting go some letting letting maybe go of some of those fears that that are presented in our own minds of like well how is this person going to respond right I've never talked to them right so it's really about just getting out there going to the gemba right going to where the work <laughs> is happening and truly coming from a place of heart and saying hey um, how, how's it going right it's it starts it starts as simple as that sometimes. You know what I mean? Well, I even comment early, you, your story earlier on, Andres, about driving to school with your daughter. You know, I don't think you have to look far either. Look at your family, right? Like, are you communicating with your significant other? Are you, I mean, really, 
you know, or are you so busy with, you know, all the things we're doing that you've strangers living in your own home, you know? Um, I mean, I got teenage kids too, man. And sometimes it's like, it's tough, you know, it's like, put your phone down, dude, and let's talk, you know, you, you know, so it's, you don't have to go look even, even outside of your own home in some cases to do this. I don't, what do you guys think? Andres, I think, um, if you're up for sharing, I think when Ron was sharing this, man, I couldn't help but think of the story you shared about uh, the conversation with with your brother. If you're up for sharing, it just that just feels like like totally in in this right here. I don't know. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. No. So for like like Matt, uh, Sam mentioned, right, the the, the step we asked Katakon, uh attendees was to write a, a, a name of a person that doesn't show up in their community currently, right? And so we had to model the behavior for, for the audience ourselves. So my sticky that I wrote um, was to connect with, 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 a, with my brother, right? And, and I have, we've been kind of estranged for a bit, right? For, for the lack of better words, but it's been difficult, right? And for me, it's important to keep, have him show up in, the, in my community, in my space. And so I made an intentional uh, effort to connect with him. It took me about a week to get over my own fear of just picking up the phone. I know it sounds absurd, right? But for your own brother, call your own brother. But there's this fear, this pinned up fear. But when I got to the phone, he was kind of caught off guard. Like, why is this guy calling me? Yeah, how can I help you, right? And 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 it was not. It was a. It was, for me. It was like, how are you doing? How's your 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 mother-in-law? I know she's in the hospital. It was a place of of of, of care and and compassion. And there was this like all of a, all of a sudden this guard went down on the other side because it was through FaceTime and we had this great conversation. He said, "Shared, you know, I've been meaning to come out to your place and spend some time with your family and and just uh, get together maybe for a barbecue." And and that almost brought me to tears, Ron, because that is like mm-hmm. th- that is this very special moment that nobody can can remove from you, right? But it took bravery and intentionality, and and this whole thing is going to take time to repair itself, right? So it's really like about about being brave with this thing, whether it's kata mm-hmm. or, or 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 just starting a conversation, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I just am so proud to have been on this journey with Andres. It's been so meaningful to see he is challenge me in so many ways by demonstrating something like that, like stepping out with a brother that he hasn't talked to and he was brave enough to like take that intention and set that example so when we talk about like the people that are listening right like thinking about those things in your life just having that conversation right i know for me andres you had challenged me like we had this conversation um even i think it was as we were preparing for the presentation and i was sharing ron to your point about my kids and how they were you know, they're on their phones quite often. And, and for myself, um, that's definitely a thing for me where I can find myself wondering and, and being in that space. And we had had an intention of having a family dinner, right? Like that, that's something I grew up with, like all throughout my, my growing up years, very warm memories of we'd go through, go around the table. We'd each share like, <laughs> I go through our days, share like three things, the highs and lows of the days. And it just meant so much. And I was like, I want to do that when I have a family and we just hadn't done it. And I felt like some pangs of regret around that. And so I was, I was kind of sharing something around that. And I'm just like, you know, I think you had shared that you, you do that, right? You guys, like we put our phones away and we have intentional time mm-hmm. with our, with our family at dinner. And I was like, damn, you know, I really would love to do it. And he's like, well, why don't you? And I, at first I have to be honest, like I was like really defensive. I was like, well, why are you asking? Like, don't tell me what to do with my family. (laughs) Right. Right. Exactly. That's exactly what came up for me. Right. Like, and, but then when Ron, when I came back and I sat with that, I was like, cause he, I forget exactly what you said, understood, but it was like in, in Andres, actually wasn't like, he was very gentle, but he was also very like clear, like direct or clear. And I was like, yeah, why can't I, why can't I like ask? And, it took all of me to come to my, my oldest daughter who was 18 and say, Hey, what would you think if we had like two nights a week where we had family dinner and like we put away our phones and we just talked. She's like, okay. And I was like, wait, what? Like that easy. And it took everything in me right here. I'm a guy who was out here like 
I literally put in a resignation to resign from my job for like nine years. And this was harder than that. Like the fear that came up in me was like, oh my gosh. And then asking my wife and asking my other daughter. And then we just started that. And can I tell you like the first dinner we had was more joy that we've had as a family than it was just amazing. But all because I stepped past that moment, like Andres did with his brother and like I did in this and something beautiful came out of that. Now, can mm -hmm. we promise that when you do that in your organization with that person, that something beautiful like that? <laughs> no, of course not. But it's the start, right? It's the start. It's taking mm -hmm. that step. It's like actually practicing what we preach and taking that next step to move towards yeah. that place. This vision that we have of this beautiful community that we want to create starts right here, right now mm -hmm. with you taking that one step. And not giving up mm. when it doesn't go the way that you think it go was going to go. Like you set an yeah. expectation. What actually happens, I, it's not going to happen the way you expect it to. I promise you that. But it's like sitting back, doing what Andres did, doing what I did, doing what, Ron, I'm sure you've done millions of times is reflecting and going, okay, yeah. what did I learn from that? And where am I going to go from here? Because this is the work that we all want to do. And we're doing it for more than just a paycheck. <laughs> this isn't the yeah. glamorous <laughs> lean life, right? <laughs> Mm -hmm. We're doing it because it means something to us and we want to build it yeah. where everybody feels seen, heard, valued. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we live in a broken world, guys, you know, and it's, you know, I suppose it's probably always been divisive, you know, I and mean, we always say, oh, it's so divisive, but probably was a hundred years ago. I mean, um, as well, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm a big believer that this whole movement of ours can, you know, it, it's not going to get everybody to agree with each other, but it could make us not be so ugly to one another you know what i mean and and uh we all want the world to be better like and i think everybody can agree to that and so this is the great uniting force which is called continuous improvement that's why i'm so passionate about it so yeah yeah good stuff man guys this has been awesome um if folks um not if Folks definitely want to connect with you guys. So <laughs> what is the best way for them to, uh, to reach out to, uh, to both of you? Yeah, um, you can find uh, Andres Salamillo on LinkedIn for sure and or Facebook as well. And we're on, I'm on those platforms or and yeah. Or, what about your company, Andres? A little shout out like as far as a w website or yes. you know, Walmart's listening when I increase their orders or something i don't know if they're no. listening or not <laughs> no, that's good no uh, ron yeah our, our website is www.smithgardens.com and okay. um yeah you'll see beautiful flowers and beautiful people on there nice nice sam what about you man yeah you can find me on on linkedin i'm always up in those streets and then illuminatecoach.com is is my yeah. website i'm always on linkedin and i always love Having conversations like this is my jam. So if you yeah. want to chat, you want to move forward, you want to be your best, like have your glory self shine. That's I love having those conversations. Let's do it. Love it. Love it. And uh, everybody just scroll down on your app there. We're going to have everything linked up to uh, reach out to these guys. Let's go connect. And uh, yeah, man, we'll keep making, trying to make the world a better place. That's all we can do, right? <laughs> so good you stuff. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys. You take care. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Sam. Thanks, Ron. Thanks for listening. Whether you've been on the continuous improvement journey for many years, or perhaps you're just getting started, Gemba Academy is here to support you. And while we're best known for our more than 1,500 Lean and Six Sigma teaching and virtual tour videos, we also have a team of experienced Lean and Six Sigma practitioners available for one-on-one -on -one coaching, as well as a variety of Lean and Six Sigma certification options. To learn more and to schedule a demo, head on over to GembaAcademy.com.